Good afternoon, Year 6, and welcome to uh, the second part of our topic lesson, Biography Writing. Today I'm going to focus, in, focus on how we are going to improve our writing. So well done to all of you that have sent in a Google Slides or a doc, um, and they have been marked, so well done for that. Um, you have got points for improvement but what i would just ask is that um you don't just cut and paste something from the internet that you do actually write in your own words so in order to show you how to improve i am going to share my screen with you and So we are on Monday the 8th of February 2021. Our topic is me, myself and CSI and we are learning English biography writing within our topic. Our learning is to edit and redraft the biography. Our focus is to develop and improve your editing and redrafting skills to ensure that you produce a well-written biography. But the purpose is to edit and redraft your biography using the key points identified by marking and feedback. And the assessment will be you will edit and redraft your work to create a clear, informative biography about Charles Darwin and the key feature using the key features that you learned. So last week we looked at the structure of a biography. So the first part of the biography should be an introduction. So you are introduce who you are writing about and explain why he or she is famous. It should be written in chronological order, time order, starting with their early life, childhood and working through their life story in time order. The final paragraph should include why they are remembered and the impact that they had on the modern world. It should be written in the past tense. Third person should be used throughout he, she, they. Fronted adverbials, especially adverbials of time, should show time order. For example, after, next, sometime later, before, previously, eventually, after a while, as soon as he could, immediately. Significant dates should be included and linked to events that you write about. You can use quotes either from the subject themselves or other people. Let's have a look. So I've got an introductory page that just says the life of Charles Darwin. And this is what my introductory page, my first page looked like last week. It said, who was Charles Darwin? I have a map of um, the UK and I've marked on the map where um, Charles Darwin was born. And my introduction says, Charles Darwin was born the 12th of February, 1809 in Shrewsbury, England. He was a, a scientist who discovered evolution and influenced the way we think about the origins of man, humans today. Which is a good, simple introduction, which is all you need. You don't want too much information in your introduction, otherwise your biography won't flow. But I improved this. So I just worked on my second paragraph. It says, Charles Darwin was born on the 12th of February, 1809 in Shrewsbury, England. So I've kept that piece of information the same, but I found that my second piece of information could be improved. So I put, he was a scientist, so I've used my pronoun he, who, were, who showed the world how living things could naturally change or evolve over a period of time. So as I did more research about Charles Darwin, I changed exactly um, what I said about him, making sure that I use subject specific words like naturally change, evolve. So I'm using those subject specific words that we need in our biography. Then I had, when he was nine years old, Charles Darwin went to Shrewsbury School for Boys. Darwin did not particularly enjoy school and found some of the work like Latin and Greek hard. He did, however, love science and was always asking questions. When he was 13 years old, he set up a science lab in his garden shed. So I haven't got a subheading here to tell you what part of my biography I'm writing about. So I looked at how I could improve that. And as you can see, I've written a lot more information this time. So I've 
got my subheading, Charles Darwin's childhood. And so I tell you a bit more about him. Charles Darwin was born into a wealthy family. His father was a respected, successful doctor, and his mother was the daughter of Josiah Wedgwood, who owned a world famous china factory. So he was lucky in that he was born into a wealthy family. From an early age, Charles was curious about nature, often spending hours upon hours in his family garden. So I'm telling you about where his love of nature started. Charles' love of science led to him building a science lab in his garden. When he was nine years out to help him investigate the stones, pebbles and birds that he collected. Unfortunately, when he was nine years old, Charles' mother passed away and he was sent away to boarding school. He hated being away from home and struggled to learn. He developed a particular dislike for Greek and Latin subjects that he had to endure on a daily basis. I will tell you about his childhood and a significant event that happened to him in his childhood. His mom passing away and being sent away to boarding school really changed um, him in that um, he was always um, getting into trouble for running away back home because his boarding school wasn't too far away. So, again, this was my previous paragraph so when he was 16 years old darwin sent my last week's work was sent to edinburgh to train to become a doctor like his father grandfather and brother who were also doctors however darwin did not enjoy it and knew he did not want to become a doctor he didn't like looking at blood his father then sent him to cambridge to become a bit vicar but he was more interested in learning about nature and animals he had lots of friends and teachers at university that helped him to learn more about these things it's good basic detail. Um, but I've got the same image that I had on my previous um, slides as a map. So I've decided to look at how I can improve that. So straight away, I've got um, a subheading and I've got a significant date. Remember, one of the key features was including these dates. So in 1825, at the age of 16, Charles went away to Edinburgh University and I've used brackets in Scotland just to tell my reader where it is just in case they don't know to begin studying to become a doctor after watching just two operations he knew that medicine was not the career for him but partly to please his father Charles kept on with his studies finally one of those um adverbials of time that I need to make sure I'm including. After his second year of medical school, Charles confessed to his father that he didn't want to be a doctor. His father was very angry and was worried that Charles would never amount to anything. Uncertain about what to do for the best, Dr. Darwin sent Charles to Cambridge University. He was to study theology. So theology is a, one of those technical words that I also need to make sure that I am improving. Use of brackets to add slightly more information that tells you what theology is. It's how to become a vicar or a minister. As this was considered a respectable career. Whilst there, Charles met a professor, John Stevens Henslow, who taught botany. The two became good friends and spent time to walking together and studying nature. John became Charles' mentor, teaching him what he knew about the study of plants. So I've improved my information there. I've given you a bit more background and I've given you more information about this man who has a significant impact on what Charles does next with his life. So this is my page from last week. Again, no subheading, a big photograph. Um, and it tells you about how Darwin passed his exams to become a vicar, but did not want his job. John Henslow, a teacher from Cambridge, sent him a letter. So I have actually given you more background on my previous slide about him. So let's have a look at how I've improved that slide. So I've given it a heading, opportunity of a lifetime. I've put a photograph of the person who was important in this opportunity of a lifetime and a black and white image of the HMS Beagle because that's how it would have been 
photographed or drawn in that time. So after Charles graduated from college in 1832, again including another significant date, his plan was to return home and become a minister. However, a letter from his good friend, Professor Enslow, altered his course completely. The letter can, contained an offer for Charles to join Captain Robert Fitzroy on a voyage around the world. It was planned that the trip would last at least two years. The reason behind the trip was for Britain to develop trading relationships with other countries in South America and to make maps of the ocean waters so that ships would know the best route to take to reach South America. Fitzroy had an interest in science and nature and wanted to take along a naturalist, someone who studies nature, with him for company as well as research. Eventually, with support from other family members, Charles' father gave him permission to go on the voyage. On December the 27th, 1831, Charles set off on the voyage that was to change his life. So here, I need to edit my work because I have or used a lowercase d. So I'll edit that as I go along. And I'll go back to presenting to you. So again, on that page, I've developed the information that I've used and I have cohesive paragraphs. I haven't just used sentences that I found from the internet and just put them on a page. I've actually built cohesive facts. And this is all work that I have done um, and research, but I've put into my own words. So this was my um, my slide last week. Again, no subheading. The vehicle, the vehicle set sail for her voyage in 1831. Living conditions on the ship were hard at times. There was a lot of room on board. There was not a lot of room on board as the ship held 75 people, and it was always very dusty. Darwin was often sissy and also caught fever, but he was glad he made the decision to go on the trip. So the Beagle voyage lasted for five years. They traveled to South America and reached the Galapagos Islands. When he went ashore, Darwin found plants and animals that had never seen before. Animals Darwin found living in the Galapagos Islands. So I've taken those two slides and I've created a much more condensed informative slide. So journey to the Galapagos. With 70, so I've got my subheading, with 74 people on board, the ship was rather overcrowded and Charles struggled with the cramped conditions. So I'm extending my vocabulary. I'm talking about cramped conditions. Not one inch was lost, he wrote. So I've got that important quote. There are lots of quotes you can use from Darwin, um, but I put this one in um, to show you that I've included a quote. Unfortunately, after only two days at sea, Charles began to suffer with seasickness and spent most of the trip struggling to overcome this unsuccessfully. During the trip, Darwin spent a lot of time on land, collecting plant samples and studying the nature around him. He began to think like a scientist and began to keep a diary, recording his findings in more and more detail. In 1835, whilst on the Galapagos Islands, Charles saw a volcano erupt and experienced an earthquake. This set him thinking about the earth, how the earth must have changed over time and was still changing. It was here that he saw a Galapagos tortoise. He was fascinated by the giant creatures that he thought must have come from another planet. And they put a, an image from one of his diaries in um, onto my page with the giant Galapagos tortoises. So the giant, Gal giant Galapagos tortoises were important in his research. So I've mentioned them here with a date and more um, vocabulary that is specific. So last week, had Darwin wrote down all of his findings and sent home information to England about the things he had found. When he returned home to England in 1835, he continued to study plants and animals and was now a well-known scientist. Excuse me, I'm just going to go back to my meat. For some reason, it's showing that my camera isn't on. I don't know why that is, but it is. Okay. 
Darwin wrote down all his findings and sent home information to England about the things he had found. When he returned to England in 1836, he continued to study plants and animals and was now a well-known scientist in England. Good information, but again, very, very short and not at all um, the sort of writing that I would expect in year six. So I have returning home. So this is my new improved page. On the 2nd of October, 1836, Darwin returned to England. The voyager had changed his life and he knew that he wanted to continue as a scientist. He began to work with other scientists, developing his ideas of evolution and adaptation. So those important words, again, evolution, adaptation. His research continued for many years until finally on the 24th of November, 1859, Charles Book on the Oranges of the Species by Means of Natural Selection was published, but that was not the end of his research. He thought that millions of years ago, living things had all started off in the same way and had gradually very, very slowly changed. In this way, lots of different animals and plants had developed. This idea was called evolution. So, and then I've got on the 19th of April, 1982, Darwin passed away, but his legacy lives on. I think that page still needs a bit of improving, which I will work on this afternoon whilst you're editing as well. So this was my final page before. Again, no subheading, but I've got the pictures and it tells you about his famous book, but it doesn't tell you the title. So I've improved that from the previous slide. And this was where I have, and this page is my final page. It says the origin of the species is considered one of the most important books on science ever written. And today, Charles Darwin's ideas are considered the cornerstone of modern scientists. And his discoveries are just as important today as when he lived. So with my final paragraph, I have taken my um, ending of my biography and related it to the beginning. So it's there. So as you can see, I've worked hard to improve on my biography. It's in no way perfect, but I hope it shows you more of the kind of work that I, I and Miss Francois would like to see from you. So remember the key points in your presentation. Please do not just copy and paste paragraphs from the internet. That's not what writing is about. Um, make sure that you write in cohesive paragraphs, that you make any corrections that you need to make. And I just want to show you something. If um, I have um, highlighted any of your work, whether it's in green or red, and you want to remove it, I'll just highlight this in red just to show you. Okay, so, and I put a comment down the side, you can reply to my comment to tell me that you've corrected the work. But if you want to take this red off, so all you need to do is click and select the text that has been highlighted. If you go to this highlight color here at the top of the screen, bring that down and take it to transparent, it will take your work back to its original black colour. Okay, so I hope that's helped to show you how to improve your biography and I am looking forward to receiving your improved biographies. So Enjoy your afternoon, work hard, and I'll look forward to marking your work.